today I will be doing uh, this talk uh, on the Mahanama Sutta, which is uh, a sutta that I call the, the um, Recollections of the Awakened. And so these are the remembering the Buddha, the good qualities of the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha, virtuous behavior, generosity, and the Devas. So these six wonderful uh, recollections. And they are very useful for getting into the metta, getting into the loving kindness, and generating that feeling uh, using the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha as uh, objects of upliftment, uplifting the mind with joy or gladness are very powerful. And so here I w we will begin with the sutta and then flow into meditation. And technically this is, this is a meditation in itself. So I invite you to close your eyes and take a posture in which you feel comfortable and let go of any tension in your body and in your mind. And allow yourself to be fully present to this wonderful discourse and smile. Once the Awakened One was living with the Sakyans and Kapilavatu in the Banyan Tree Hermitage. Kapilavatu is the home of the Buddha. Then Mahanama, the Sakyan, went to him, paid loving respects, sat down to the side and asked, Bhante, he who is an Arya, a wise meditator, one who has arrived to the fruit and understands the teaching. How does he or she live? How does he or she frequently meditate? Very interesting question. Mahanama is actually asking about how does it feel to have seen the Dhamma and entered the stream and have unwavering confidence in the Dhamma. This is how one who has arrived at the fruit, who understands the teaching, lives and frequently meditates. Here Mahanama, a wise meditator, often recalls the truth finder in this way. The exalted one is an arahant, perfectly all awakened, endowed with knowledge and conduct, auspicious knower of the worlds unsurpassed guide for those who seek self-mastery, teacher of devas and humans, awakened and blessed. Here the, the Buddha was praised for these qualities to be uh, extremely virtuous and not only to know the teaching and the path to awakening, but also have the conduct that comes with it. And so he was very well known for practicing what he preached. And his teaching was known to be very clear and very precise and accurate, hard to find cracks in it. That's why he was said to be an unsurpassed guide for those who seek self-mastery. He really knew what he taught through his own understanding. In this way, whenever this wise meditator recalls the truth finder, for that time that meditator's mind is not overwhelmed by outward distractions, is not overwhelmed by anger, is not overwhelmed by confusion, for that time, because of his consideration for the truth finder, his mind is straight and uplifted. With a straight and uplifted mind, this wise meditator knows and experiences the meaning 
knows and experiences the Dharma, knows and experiences the natural gladness of the Dharma. From that gladness, bliss arises in his mind. From that blissful mind, the body becomes calm. Calm in body, one experiences happiness. With a happy mind comes samadhi, collected mental harmony. Meditation. This wise meditator is one who lives harmoniously amongst the agitated, friendly amongst the hostile. Having come upon the stream of the Dhamma, one cultivates remembering the Buddha. At other times, this wise meditator often recalls the Dhamma in this way. Well explained is the Blessed One's teaching, directly visible, immediate, inviting, leading upwards, to be experienced for the wise, for oneself. This is how the Dhamma is known, the teaching of the Buddha, and was known also at that time, to be uplifting, leading upwards, and directly visible when there is anger arising it causes tension it is not for our own benefit it is not for anyone else's benefit around us we let it go there is relief immediate akaliko and so this teaching is immediate directly visible and effective along with practicing virtuous behavior practicing mental development, meditation, and wisdom, discernment. No blind beliefs involves no dogma. Whenever this wise meditator recalls the Dhamma, for that time, that meditator's mind is not overwhelmed by outward distractions, not overwhelmed by anger, and not overwhelmed by confusion. For that time, because of one's consideration for the Dhamma, one's mind is straight and uplifted. With a straight and uplifted mind, this wise meditator knows and experiences the meaning, knows and experiences the Dhamma, knows and experiences the gladness of the Dhamma. From that gladness, bliss arises in the mind. From that blissful mind, the body becomes calm. Calm in body, one experiences happiness. With a happy mind comes samadhi. And this is how the Buddha explained how to gather the mind, how to make it be collected, harmonious, and happy. This wise meditator is one who lives harmoniously amongst the agitated, friendly amongst the hostile, Having come upon the stream of the Dhamma, one cultivate remembering the Dhamma. The stream of the Dhamma is the Eightfold Path, virtue, meditation, and discernment. At other times, this wise meditator often recalls the Sangha in this way. Good is the practice of the awakened one's Sangha. Straight is the practice of the awakened one's Sangha. Wise is the practice of the awakened one's Sangha. Meaningful is the practice of the awakened one's Sangha. That is the four pairs of people, the eight kinds of individuals. These are the four stages of awakening, the fruit and the path, both. The Sangha of the Awakened One is worthy of support, worthy of hospitality, worthy of generosity, worthy of respect, an unsurpassed field of goodness for the universe. Everything that is given to the monks or the Sangha it goes to the whole community. There is never anything offered to a single monk. It is also, it is always shared amongst the whole Sangha and we only take what we need which is uh, often very little hopefully <laughs> and and so what is given bears great fruit it goes far because there is no uh, great need there is contentment 
whenever this Arya, this wise meditator, recalls the Sangha for that time, that meditator's mind is not overwhelmed by outward distractions, not overwhelmed by anger, not overwhelmed by confusion. Because of his consideration for the Sangha, his mind is straight and uplifted. With a straight and uplifted mind, this, uh, this wise meditator knows and experiences the meaning knows and experiences the Dhamma, knows and experiences the natural gladness of Dhamma. From that gladness, bliss arises in the mind. From that blissful mind, the body becomes calm. Calm in body, one experiences happiness. With a happy mind comes Samadhi. This wise meditator is one who lives harmoniously amongst the agitated friendly amongst the hostile, having come upon the stream of the Dhamma, one cultivates remembering the Sangha and remembering that it is so many people on this planet practicing this wonderful path and that is also part of the community, part of the Sangha. There are many branches of Buddhism but uh, last time I heard was that there are one person out of five on this planet that is practicing this path and to remember this that there's so many people gives us great confidence and great faith and we can be very uplifted sometimes we perhaps are affected by the way the world is right now but we can also we can always remember that there's people practicing virtue goodness, generosity, help, compassion, and that is wonderful. At other times, this wise meditator <laughs> often recalls their own good conduct, which is unbroken, unbreached, constant, flawless, liberating, recommended by the wise, unspoiled, and leading directly to samadhi. And this is the role of virtue in the path. It's not only to tell what you have to do. It's in fact to help you, to support you, and to support everybody around you. And to support your mind so that it can be clear and it can be free from remorse. And free from trouble. And leading directly to samadhi to meditation. In this way, whenever this wise meditator recalls their own good conduct, for that time that meditator's mind is not overwhelmed by outward desires, outward distractions. It is not overwhelmed by anger. It is not overwhelmed by confusion. For that time, because of one's consideration for their own good conduct, their mind is straight and uplifted. And this does not mean selfishness. Some people interpret it, interpret it as recollecting your own virtuous behavior is a kind of a selfish act. And this is not what is meant here. This is simply remembering that you've done good. And that comes with freedom. That comes with liberation of mind, clarity of mind. With a straight and uplifted mind, this wise meditator knows and experiences the meaning, knows and experiences the Dhamma, knows and experiences the natural gladness of Dhamma. From that gladness, bliss arises in the mind. From that blissful mind, the body becomes calm. Calm in body, one experiences happiness. With a happy mind comes Samadhi. This wise meditator is one who lives harmoniously amongst the agitated, friendly amongst the hostile. Having come upon the stream of the Dhamma, one cultivates remembering their own good conduct. At other times, this wise meditator often recalls one's own generosity in this way. Such a delight it is for me. Such a wonderful gain it is for me that I live the house life with a, f with a heart free from selfish desires, giving liberally, open-handedly, delighting in letting go, always ready to help, 
and taking delight in sharing. In this way, whenever this wise meditator recalls one, one's own charity for that time, that meditator's mind is straight and uplifted, and it is not overwhelmed by outward distraction, not overwhelmed by anger, and not overwhelmed by confusion. For that time, because of one's consideration for their own charity, their mind is straight and uplifted. With a straight and uplifted mind, this wise meditator knows and experiences the meaning, knows and experiences the Dhamma, knows and experiences the natural gladness of Dhamma. And this is very much part of the practice because Samadhi is something that comes from virtuous, wholesome behavior and physical virtuous behavior translates into mental harmony, mental peace. And when we do these things we, and we remember them, we know and experience the meaning, the meaning of the Dhamma, the meaning of the practice is to be happy. And we know and experience the Dhamma at that time because we practice the Dhamma through happiness. And we know and experience the natural gladness of Dhamma because these three things come together. From that gladness, bliss arises in the mind. From that blissful mind, the body becomes calm. Calm in body, one experiences happiness. With a happy mind comes samadhi. This wise meditator is one who lives harmoniously amongst the agitated, friendly amongst the hostile. Having come upon the stream of the Dhamma, one cultivates remembering their own charity. This also means simply helping however you can. Then, at other times, this wise meditator often recalls the devas in this way. There are the devas of the four great directions. There are the devas of the thirty-three. There are the devas of the underworld. There are the contented devas. There are the devas who delight in creation. There are devas beyond the power of creation. There are devas of radiant bodies. There are devas beyond this. Some people see these, some people don't. And here, maybe perhaps you have had moments where you for a moment of time you can recollect, you can remember perhaps a past life and perhaps how it felt to have a different kind of body which was much more spacious, much less coarse. These devas, for example, of radiant bodies are said to be feeding on streaming joy perhaps that is something that you remember, perhaps not. But only to know this can be uplifting. This is not for you to blindly believe in, but here is the second half of this part. It is because of their faith that those devas transmigrated and took birth here. Such faith is also experienced by me. It is because of their virtue that those devas transmigrated and took birth here. Such virtue is also experienced by me. It is because of their learning that those devas transmigrated and took birth here. Such learning is also experienced by me. It is because of their generosity that those devas transmigrated and took birth here. Such generosity is also experienced by me. It is because of their dis discernment that those devas transmigrated and took birth here. Such discernment is also experienced by me. And so this the Buddha often told the monks or whoever was listening to him at that time that these five things, um, faith, virtue, learning, generosity and wisdom or discernment are the way 
to the celestial planes or simply if we stay in this world to a very happy pleasant living in this world also in this way whenever this Arya or wise meditator recalls one's faith virtue learning generosity and discernment which are comparable to the devas for that time that meditator's mind is not overwhelmed by outward desires or outward distractions it is not overwhelmed by anger and not overwhelmed by confusion for that time because of one's consideration for the devas their mind is straight and uplifted with a straight and uplifted mind this wise meditator knows and experiences the meaning knows and experiences the Dhamma knows and experiences the natural gladness of Dhamma from that gladness bliss arises in the mind from that bliss the body becomes calm calm in body one experiences happiness with a happy mind comes samadhi this wise meditator is one who lives harmoniously amongst the had agitated friendly amongst the hostile having come upon the stream of the Dhamma one cultivates remembering the devas more the, the qualities of the devas in fact this is how one who has arrived at the fruit who understands the teaching lives and frequently meditates and on this I invite you to relax and if there was any tension in your body and in your mind before this moment simply relax and let it all go perhaps this was helpful to uplift your mind hopefully it was but if not if something catched you just let it go relax and smile Whatever happened today or maybe in the past week, if there's any little thing nagging on your mind, just relax, smile, and let go. And let your smile contaminate your whole mind and your whole body. And enjoy the bliss, the joy of letting go, relaxing. You could even take a deep breath.
the Buddha called this Viveka Jang Piti Sukkang, the bliss that arises from letting go, detaching, disengaging. Now, tension tends to sneak up upon us into our daily activities. Whatever we've been doing. Now, is there any tension that you can feel within your own body? Whether in your neck or shoulders around your head can you let it go can you enjoy the relief that comes from letting go any tension and smile. And whenever it feels right for you, perhaps you may want to bring up the feeling of loving kindness, of love inside your heart. This lush feeling in the center of your chest. this luxurious feeling of inner wealth that radiates from the center of your chest. and allow it to run its course and suffuse your whole body If there is any noise pulling you out of this, this meditation, don't grasp at it. Just let it go. It's only noise. And smile. If there is any train of thought in your mind, simply allow it to unwind. 
and not grasp at it, not hold a particular thought. and bathe into this feeling of love. And notice how distractions which come with slight tension in the mind when we let it go. how this creates more space for loving kindness. The less tension in the mind we are experiencing, the more spacious the feeling of love the more established it can be. And when you feel it is a good time for you, when you feel full of this feeling of love within your own body, allow it to shine outwards in all directions in one direction, a second, a third, a fourth, above and below, everywhere, unbounded, unconstricted, just allow it to shine. No need to force or push. It will shine on its own if you simply allow it to. and smile.
If you're having problems with the feeling of love itself, just smile. No problem. If you smile, if you feel joy, you are practicing the Buddha's teaching. And you are practicing meditation. If a thought of anger arises, a thought of discontentment, impatience, now you've left the meditation. But as soon as you let that go and you relax, you bring up another smile, you're back in the meditation. And just doing this is wonderful. Now if you can't if you can work with the love that's great If you can't smile If you can't smile laugh Mine gets a little serious sometimes. It's good to laugh at it. Then we can let it better let go and move on to joy, to happiness and calm. And allow your awareness to dive and be fully
submerged in this radiant feeling of boundless love. If the mind is very restless, just continue relaxing, continue letting go, and eventually it will unwind, it will slow down. That is Dhamma. It has to slow down when you release and relax. And the love and the joy will help. Perhaps repeating something could help you bring up the feeling of love if it falls away, like a tool. Perhaps you could say, may I be happy. May all living beings be happy and feel the love in your heart as you say this. Maybe bringing up an object or an image like someone you really love and respect. Perhaps a memory of a pet you really loved. Perhaps it is when you were playing with a child. Or somewhere in nature that brings up this feeling of love for all beings. Whatever works for you And when the feeling arises, try to stay with it for as long as you can and smile.
if a problematic situation or someone arises and with which you have difficulties try sending them your compassion see perhaps how these people are hurting and try forgiving them perhaps you can even say I forgive you I forgive you for not understanding I forgive you for causing me difficulties and like this free yourself from any animosity Do not carry rocks in your heart. Welcome difficulties with a compassionate heart, a forgiving heart. Remember that all living beings want to be happy. Even those who are hurting living beings. And these people are the people that need love and compassion the most. And like this, use these difficulties to strengthen your compassion, to strengthen your love, to strengthen your wisdom.
May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty powers share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha sasana. Sad, sad, sad. So on this, I invite you to carry this wonderful feeling in your life and practice your generosity and give it to as many people as you can and smile and have a wonderful week. Some of you I will see very soon and... I wish you all the best. Till next time.